Steps Recovery, they are committed to the safety, comfort, and success of every resident that comes to them seeking treatment. Joining us today to talk about their program is Dr. Carrie Rondazzo, Clinical Director of First Steps Recovery, and Joshua Beauchene, CEO of First Steps Recovery. Welcome, guys. Hi. Thank you. Well, first off, tell us a little bit about First Steps Recovery. Well, First Steps Recovery is a full continuum of care that specializes in treating addiction. And a full continuum of care basically means that we provide detox, which is a medical portion of recovery of getting the chemicals out of your system supervised by physician and nursing and then we go to residential treatment which is where they live there and they get clinical care so individual counseling individual case management they get groups throughout the day so they get the six to eight hours of programming a day along with different activities to keep them engaged and once they finish that treatment then they continue on to outpatient which is where we kind of really help them connect and plug back into the community so this is basically a 24-hour, everyday type of program. You're just yeah. immersed into it. Yeah, on the residential level. Yeah. That's a, a great way to do it, since it. I mean, you're always battling it, and yeah. on top of that, mm -hmm. it's also something you have with your family too. They're also affected by They're it. They're very much affected by it. So we're in. Uh, so a lot of the treatment is about healing families, having them understand about the disease, and uh, yeah, working on a lot of things. There's a lot of damage done with addiction. And how many families and groups do you guys usually see at the center or help out usually oh. on a yearly basis? Mm -hmm. We see typically over 500 families themselves and because a lot of the people that come in for treatment, they don't have families that are involved. And so it's kind of half and half. So we probably see over 1,000 patients during the year. Wow. But specifically, we work with about 500 families. And on a weekly basis, we have family support groups for people that have either gone through the program or that are just wanting to kind of find out more about how to help their loved one in the disease of addiction. And so they're able to participate on a weekly basis as well. Mm -hmm. So with that, what kind of goes into some of those meetings or when you bring your family in? How do you guys kind of tackle that? Well, first of all, we do a lot of education on what addiction is. Because a lot of people, they just don't know. So that, that's one component of it. And then teach them uh, self-care. Because a lot of families aren't taking care of their self. They're trying to save the alcoholic addict, and they're not taking care of their self. So we teach healthy boundaries, better communication skills. It's pretty amazing because the disease of addiction, you think of a, a person that's struggling with the addiction, but it's so pervasive and it permeates just their own self and radically transforms a family and really destructive. And so a lot of people that aren't familiar with the disease, they find out somebody they love is struggling with the disease of addiction and they're completely overwhelmed and have no idea how to get help. Right. And so we kind of have really become this center where it's not that just we, we're going to treat the patient or the lo identified loved one, but that we also just want to be a support system to the community and say, hey, we want to help, we want to mm -hmm. educate, we want to, because a lot of times they might not need to go to treatment right away, it just depends. And so we can help you assess and give them recommendations as the best level of, of helping that they can do. Yeah, and this is a situation, I mean, unless you're in it, you, you really don't know what that person's going through. Yeah. Right. And it's terrifying. It's terrifying for both the person that's stuck in it, and it's terrifying for the family members that love that person or seeing them progressively die. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about once you go to that outpatient you said you guys have? Do you help them once they go back into the community with the family, or how can they help them oh, keep going? Definitely. So we integrate them back into the community, um, slowly back with their families. So we do a lot of the same things we do in residential, but we're getting them back into the community and working with their families and their jobs. Yeah, really the, the opposite of addiction is connection. Yeah. And so you find that when a person's stuck in this process of addiction, they become completely detached from themselves, from the community, from their loved ones. And so really the vision, the, the progressive healing that we see is taking a person that's completely detached and, and, and really destroyed and isolated, and we bring them back to connection both with who they are and then progressively helping them connect with their loved ones and the community. You know, it's like one of the most exciting things that we see is for someone that's been caught in this pattern of addiction, all of a sudden turn around and tell the people they love, hey, I love you again. I know. Like, like parents are just like, oh my gosh, my son told me that he loved me again. It's like a miracle. Yeah. It's, it's wild. I know, it's something you don't think about, too, those little things when you get that back. Yeah. That's got to be amazing. Yeah. It's wonderful to watch. Yeah. What's a big tip you'd give people if a family is trying to struggle to see if someone's struggling with addiction but not totally sure? How can they kind of go about 
approaching that? I think the first step is always to get help. I think so often, especially because it's still got some relative taboo, like people mm -hmm. don't want to talk about something they're concerned about. And so they kind of live in this state of anxiety without asking for help. And because it tends to be something that people want to treat more discreetly, that's when we say, hey, call us because we can handle that discreetly and gently and really give them a sense of direction how, uh, how to react when they find something out that they're concerned about with addiction. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that takes the pressure off. And I mean, yeah. just going to talk like you said to someone can make a huge difference. Yeah. Well, if anyone wanted to get in touch with you guys or maybe get some help or for a loved one or anything, how would they go about doing that? So they can go to our website, www.firststepsrecovery.com, or they can call our number, which is 844-244-7837, I think. But it's first, so it's 844-BIG-STEP is the easy there way to go. remember it. I don't know if that matters. But um, the point is, is that when the person calls, whether they get our number online or straight from the, the t television, that they're going to talk to someone that's trained, that's mm -hmm. certified in addiction counseling, and so they're going to get counsel that really is is professional, and they're going to get support. And that's kind of the most important process. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so yeah. much for all of thank that information. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for everything you guys are doing. Appreciate it. Thanks. All righty. Well, come.